What is going on? Sean Don is back with a technical analysis. Here we have CJ Falcioni or Falcioni. I don't know. Falcioni. That sounds more legit. I hope I'm right there. Um, but uh, yeah, CJ is the newest member of uh, SDTC throws membership, throws programming, which means I get to, I, I have the privilege of writing all of his throwing training, his drills, his, his, his warm drills, his specific strength, his throws, what weights to throw, um, and in addition to coaching him technically. So if you want to sign up for that, go to my website, go to www.shawndonley.biz, sign up for a throws membership, or perhaps an elite membership, get some throwing and lifting programming, or just do a technical membership, and, and just get to technique advice. I don't know. It's up to you. I'm here to help offer many different services. Um, but yeah, CJ is the newest member, like I said. So let's just get into it. Let's, let's give it a look. Um, after talking with CJ, we have very similar builds. Six go. foot, 240, 250. Um, except he's, and, and we have pretty similar weight room numbers as well. Um, He's got a little bit stronger squat, though. There Actually, a lot of bit stronger squat. Strong kid. And you can see you when he throws a hammer, he throws it strong. Which is not a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a good thing either. Um, the biggest thing that we're going to have to teach you, CJ, is feeling and relaxation and um, working with the hammer, not working against it. At least that's what it looks like at uh, at first glance, based on your throw. You definitely have the power there to throw 60 meters plus, if not 65, or maybe even 70 one day. I don't know. Um, that's down the road, though. But for right now, like I said, you have the power. Uh, we have very similar strength levels, and I'm not bullshitting you when I say that you know my squat right now is maybe 385, 405. Clean and snatch were, were very similar. You have a better bench press, but I don't really bench press. And... Uh, Deadlift and stuff is pretty similar too. So, like I said, we're, we're very similar strength levels. Um, the biggest thing for you is efficiency and relaxation. And um, yeah, so let's uh, let's break it down. Let's see what we got here. So, uh, two winds, three turns, three heels. Um, first wind is good. Step back. Weight's about 50-50. Turn your shoulders back really nice. Um, I think your Left elbow comes a little bit too high. I think if you brought it more across the chest, it would uh, help you keep balance a little bit more. Um, and then also if you just turned your head back to, I mean, it looks like you're trying to keep your eyes at 12. Uh, if you looked uh, maybe a little bit more towards like 3 o'clock or, or in between that, like a one thirty ish you looked towards uh, over here some more, um, it would help you turn your shoulders back a little bit more and maybe feel a little bit more comfortable. Um, as you can see, it just looks like a little bit uncomfortable position. Um, outside of that, try not to lean back. You can see there's some like a little bit of uh, lumbar curvature here. Uh, try to keep your torso perfectly upright. Um, this sort of leaning back through the low back and especially through the upper back and leaning back of the shoulders. We'll see how the second one looks, but this leaning back is um, usually not the best thing for setting up a throw because it creates artificial tension. Um, and can lead to uh, left side pulling. It's one thing I've been trying to work on lately. Um, it's not leaning back in the winds. So try not to lean back. Don't extend the lower back. Um, keep your hips tilted forwards. Posterior pelvic tilt. Keep your abs engaged. Um, but otherwise, yeah, like I said, shoulders doing a good job turning back. Ball drops. You step up with the ball. Good timing here. Most people that I see do this wrong. You step up with the ball. Wait for the ball to pass. You shift over to the right. And once again, so this is where that left elbow comes a little bit high. Um, pulls you over to the left side a little bit. Left or right heel starts coming down. That's good. Um, a little bit. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't even say a little bit heavy on the, the, the left side. Your right side. Camera view left side. A little bit heavy over here. Um, but uh, you're just not quite. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, so so you yeah you do shift over here to your to your left side a little bit, and then as the ball comes back through, sorry right side I'm backwards today, yeah a little heavy on the right side, but then as you come back through you set up this left side axis very well shoulder hip knee ankle everything is set up and this is good, um, shoulder still doing a good job turning back on the second um, wind keeping your hands up 
Good stuff. Not letting the ball drop too much. Uh, you're doing a good job setting up that left side, like I said. Right leg starts turning. Good as the ball comes through. And then, yeah, so, so at least in the entry, CJ, um, you really got to think about setting the ball out left or kind of getting the ball ahead of you, especially coming off the heel. Um, it's easy to uh, get that left side going early and uh, create some tension with that left side and spin, pull the hammer through the circle. Um, so right in the entry, you really need to think about, um, like I said, you're doing a good job working the right leg. You're doing a good job waiting for the ball. For the most part, you're a little bit ahead of it. Head starts turning just a bit. Left hip shifts back just a bit. Um, so really just think about, like, I, I'm not sure what you think right now. Maybe, like, you wait to, till the ball gets to zero and then you, you come around. But um, whatever you do, try not to really initiate much until the ball gets to about there. Um, so what you need to do is think about uh, letting the ball pass more, being patient, letting the ball get just a little bit more ahead before you start acting on it. Um, because you are just a little bit early, this is probably going to cause some uh, problems later in the throw. It's very subtle, very minute, but waiting for the ball to pass like just an extra frame or two in the entry makes all the difference in the world. Trust me, because I struggle with the same thing. Usually, I also start my entry right as the ball gets to about here, but uh, the throws that I let it get to there or even there, those ones are really nice. Um, so, think about maybe pushing your hands past a little bit more, using your right leg, but ultimately, it's just about relaxing, which I said is going to be the biggest thing to get you to throw farther, is relaxing and giving to the ball. Not posturally, so not dipping your shoulders forward, but relaxing your arms and trusting the ball will take you where you want to go. That's going to be the biggest thing for you to work on. Um, and it doesn't even look like your arms are that tight necessarily at this point. Um, this giant pull is not helping out, but uh, we'll see later on in the throw. So yeah, just waiting for the ball to pass more before you turn. It's a, it's a very uncomfortable feeling because it does feel like the ball is going to pull you around, which is but that's kind of the feeling you want. And the more you do that, the more comfortable you become with that feeling, the farther you're going to throw and the more effortless it's going to be. Otherwise, um, your left side, you can see, it starts to open up a little bit here as the right side gets left behind. And doing a heel start is not an easy thing to do well. Um, as you can see, the left side tends to open up early because that you got to be on the heel. You can't really... Um, you got to open it somehow. And this right leg, especially when you're trying to shift back on that heel, um, it's hard to get it going quite like you need to. As you can see, it's a little bit behind. Left foot's a little bit ahead. Um, and then you get a little bit of that lopsidedness, that floppy-footed sort of thing right here. That Not a huge fan of that, but uh, I do it sometimes as well. Not ideal, but uh, that's what happens when you open up that left side a little bit early. Um, as ball gets to about 90 degrees, you can see you're almost with it. Left side's just a little bit ahead, like I said, still. Posture is pretty solid. I think this left knee could be a little bit out more over this forefoot. Hips could be a little bit more forwards. Um, otherwise, torso is pretty much straight up and down, but it's just this right leg doesn't quite do as much as it needs to, so that's why um, this hip shifts back so much. you got to use way more right leg, way more right side in general. And then also, just if you, if you do it right and you wait for the ball, you relax and you let the ball go, it will pull you out to the left side and pull you out over this um, left heel just a little bit more. Otherwise, you can see, so this is where you get a little tight with the arms. Uh, this is where you really need to relax and give to the ball. You want to feel the ball stretch out towards the cage and then also stretch down the right sector line. Um, if you can really feel the ball pull you forwards, even if you do it artificially by kind of protracting your shoulders and relaxing your arms, and you feel the ball stretch out to that right sector, you'll be much better off than right now, where as you can see, you come through these couple frames, you start to tighten up just a bit. Your arms get a little bit tight, you come back around, and then because of that, you get a little tight, like I said, uh, you, you over-rotate just a little bit. Um, and that's also a byproduct of pulling that left side just a little bit and not letting the ball pass enough um, in that first turn. Uh, so you catch... I mean, once again, solid posture here, just a little bit too late. Um, hips are a little bit too open towards, uh, what would this be, 2, 2, 315? 315, hips are a little bit, like, hips are open towards 315 when they should be more towards 270. Um, and the ball should be a little bit more, hopefully, back uh, before 270. Um, but like I said, you're catching just about 270 hips open to uh, 315. 
but posture is good. You're back over this left side for the most part. And then, uh, yeah. So you catch, you come over, rotate just a little bit, but then you do a good job, once again, waiting for the ball. See, so this is the kind of movement that I'm talking about in the entry that you need. You see how your eyes are back at uh, zero, shoulders are square. This is a good position right here. Everything is square to zero when the ball is at zero. Right leg's trying to work. Shift back just a little bit, but you see how your eyes are still back at uh, at at 12. So that's good, at zero. Um, you're letting the ball pass now. But I think you do it a little bit. So you don't do it enough in the entry, and I think you do it a little bit too much here. And this is maybe why some throws are um, inconsistent, at least from the four or five throws that you sent me. Two of them were kind of like bailed. Couldn't quite uh, get the feeling for it. Um, and I think this is why, because you do such a good job. You over-exaggerate letting the ball pass in the second turn um, that you almost don't know what to do with it. And you you almost uh, don't have the reaction time to react like you need to when you do something like this. Because uh, it's like a really, really tough thing to overcome. But I mean, otherwise, like, at this point in the second turn, just think about turning with the ball. Like I said, so you really try to let it get ahead, and your lower body's trying to turn with it, but you can see you're still fighting it with the upper body a little bit. And I, I wish I could see your face in a higher definition because you could see the, the tension and the, the effort right here. Uh, it looks like looks like you have a nice, like, wincing sort of grimace face. I don't know. Like I said, you see the effort. Um, but otherwise, like, you do a good job holding this side. Your hips need to come more forwards towards your hands. As the ball goes left, you see how your hips more or less just stay there. You're just turning with it, all right? You're just turning with the ball. You're not really acting on it. To act on it, you need to drive your hips towards your hands and kind of get a little bit of triple extension. Um, I guess it would be double extension technically because your ankle isn't really extending, but your knee and your hip extend a little bit. Your right leg is triple extending. Your hips comes towards your hands. You act back on the ball. And that will prevent you from getting pulled back around. So you see this dramatic, you're over here on this right side, and then you get pulled way around to the left side. And once again, catch kind of late. Um, if you got your hips more towards the ball, got your shoulders just back a little bit more over the hips, they're perfectly up and down, but you need your shoulders back just a little bit, or at least, like I said, your hips a little bit more forward towards the ball to act backwards against it to use that left side, um, which is, I know, I said, just use your left side. Uh, at the right time, it's the right thing, but most people use their right left side at the wrong time. Um, so using a little bit more left side, getting your hips towards your hands, getting a little extension through the lower body. Um, mostly as it comes through zero, that's when that stuff needs to start happening. Once it gets to about here, you give to the hammer once again, and you need to let the hammer go nice and long towards the right sector line, stretch towards the cage, and then um, that hips towards hand sort of motion will... will kind of pull you back uh, over this right side just a bit more instead of getting kind of dragged around this left side. Um, motion in single sports decent. Could be a little bit more knee skip as opposed to butt kick. Um, I think that's another reason why you catch a little bit late. Uh, but then once again, you can just see the tension through the arms in single support. This is when you need to relax and give to the hammer and trust it. Trust that it'll take you where you need to go feel the tension. You're creating tension throughout the arm, so you can't exactly feel the ball. And uh, that's not exactly the best thing. And I think that's why you kind of come around and catch a little bit late. So you catch a little bit earlier here in, in regards to the feet, but hammer's still about 270. Posture, once again, is good. You're back over this left side, but um, the arms are just too tight. And once again, hips are a little bit uh, too square to 315 as opposed to um, like 270-ish or even earlier. 245, 250. Um, otherwise, see, so, and since you catch late, this is where it starts to get you. Um, through these next few frames, you can really see that left side pulling back because if you don't catch early enough and you don't have enough tension on the ball, um, if you don't, or if you aren't connected to the ball, you will pull this left side to create tension, to create connection. Um, so as the ball comes through zero, you can see this left side really tighten up and, and left hip and left this whole left side kind of pulls back as the ball comes through zero. Uh, right leg is trying to do a good job working with the ball, but your upper body is just so tight. There's, there's so much tension in this left shoulder, there's not really much you can do. Because of that, you also are going to pick up super early. So 
two and a three is generally a shorter end of double support, like meaning you pick up your right foot earlier, but still this is this is still too early. Um, ideally, your right foot wouldn't come off the ground till about 90, but even if you just kept your right foot on the ground a little bit longer till like let's say 45, 60, 70 degrees, that'd be much better. Um, this again comes back to relaxing your arms and letting the ball pass. So like I said, first turn, entry, whatever you want to call it, did a good job. All right, you you almost did a good job of waiting for the ball. You gotta get it go, gotta let it go a little bit more. Second turn, you kind of overdid it. And third turn, you're going back to um, more of the first turn entry a little bit uh, too quick. Don't let the ball pass enough. Uh, right leg's trying to turn with the ball, but like I said, you can just see this tension through the left side, uh, really pulling back against it. Right leg, and see. So this is where that hip kind of comes more towards the hands but that left side is just cutting everything off I guess I got to relax let things stretch to the right sector you can see this bent right arm another indicator that the left side is doing too much the right side is not doing much um, good a skip and then you got to think about stepping in the direction of the sector so going back to the whole hip towards the hand thing as the ball comes through zero hips go towards hands as ball goes left and goes towards the sector you want to think about driving your hip towards the high point um, that'll help get your right hip underneath you and um, uh, help you feel that pulse and direction and uh, energy towards the sector that'll uh, make things just feel much more effortless. Uh, same thing though, let ball stretch towards the right sector line, drive the hip towards the hand or dip towards the high point. You can see here, it's so like this position, I mean besides the shoulders and arms and ball position is decent. But then you can see you come around with this left side. This left side's doing too much. So you come around big time in this final turn. And you catch super staggered, meaning right foot is deep, much deeper than the left foot because you pick up too early in the previous turn um, in an effort to catch the ball early. So in uh, typical Kidboy Johnson fashion, don't think about preparing for the finish. Um, let the ball really stretch and go long and get, and get past you going in that final turn and then turn and then release. Don't think about trying to prepare for it. Don't think about trying to load up. Um, the best finishes are the ones that just kind of happen. They release, or you release the ball on its own and it goes. Um, but you can see, like I said, so just a little bit, uh, heavy forwards. I mean, not quite back against the ball, back against this left side because you are catching so early. Uh, it's the deepest catch of the throw, but, uh, in a um, not optimal way. Like I said, you just pick up too early um, in the previous turn. So it's kind of sacrificing one thing for another, and the end result is really uh, not as spectacular as you'd imagine. Um, you can see the strength, because you're able to use this right leg to really fight through this heavy, like I said, kind of forward center of mass. Ball's pulling you forwards. Right leg's trying to do a lot to hold you up. Left side's doing a lot to pull the ball around. You can see. All right, right leg doesn't do much turning after ball passes zero. Right leg doesn't really do much turning at all because it is mostly left-sided. And you can see this extension coming through this left leg. And then strength, willing it out to the sector. Um, left side coming off hard, and then you're also going to fall back because, like I said, this final catch, you're just a little bit too forwards. Um, forwards towards the camera, not back enough, uh, back over that left side. So, I mean, they come through the finish well. Like I said, that's what happens when you're strong enough. You can kind of will it out there. Um, so, CJ, hopefully that helps you out. Um, excited to work with you because, like I said, I think you have a lot of potential. Um, especially, like I said, we're very similar strength numbers. I think you could throw a lot further. Um, but overall, though, yeah. Wait for the ball to pass more. Relax those arms towards the sector. Turn with the ball. Go with the ball. And let it stretch towards the sector. And then, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing in every turn. Got to calm that left side down. Feel that right side working more. And then uh, get you to relax and really truly connect with the ball instead of creating that artificial tension by tightening your arms. We need you to relax and feel the ball pull on you, not you pulling on the ball. So hopefully that makes sense if you guys... Or uh, CJ, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm going to send you a big, long email here in a second outlining your new throws program. And if anybody out there wants a throws program, 
of their own. Go to SeanDonnelly.biz, sign up for throws membership, elite membership, get a technical analysis while you're at it. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Sean Don, peace and out. Happy to help. Goodbye.